Let's continue to disassemble the task importer one by disconnecting the cables that attach the lower and upper halves. This being the records and playback boards, this being the mixer board and the cue board over here on the right. So let's look at the cables that are running over from the cue board over to the record playback board. So I hope you can see that there are one, two, three groups. I've uh, tied them together with cable ties. They may be tied together in a different way with zip ties on your unit. But this brown and red one over here and also this brown and red one here. They're terminating in two headers. One's immediately below as I looked at this oscillator, which is the silver unit here. That header is actually very easy to miss in reassembly because it's tucked in amongst several other black components, a transistor, some capacitors and an op amp. But the colour of the header matches the connector. Likewise, this one over here, yellow connector matching a yellow header. I've said there's three, a bigger part than there's four, isn't there? One. Really, this is splitting onto two different headers. So we've got another brown and red pair with a red connector. And that connector is going into a red header. We're looking for landmarks on this board. We've got these series of four little variable inductors and then two SIP op amps over. And then here's your little red header there. And the last one that's coming over at this cue board, that's in the bottom left corner here. And there's a group of three white headers here. That's the only one that's got three pins. So those are all detached. Next, let's look at this group of cables that's coming over from this side closest to the edge of the case of the mixer board. So there are four thick cables here. They actually contain four sub cables each. Brown, red, orange and yellow. Again, that's colour coding to do with the channel. Brown's channel one, red's channel two. Orange is channel 3 and yellow is channel 4. And they terminate in headers that are beside the four quarter inch input sockets in front here. So those cables are quite delicate. I'm going to pull the connector away from the header using a pair of pliers. And we've got two bunches consisting of brown and grey wires. Four of them splitting into eight pins an 8 pin header over here that's adjacent to the tape out sockets and over here by the DC input and the line out sockets we've got a 4 pin connector going into a 4 pin header they're white as well and then that leaves us with this connector here it's branching off to 5 different cables Brown, red, orange, yellow again, and white, which is presumably some sort of common grain connector. So sometimes you need to pry up these little lips, give it a bit of encouragement before that will come out. So that's that group separate. Last of all, let's look at this group, which is coming out of this corner of the mixer board, closest to the cassette player. We'll look at these brown and grey cables first. They're splitting off into a black connector and a red connector that match up with black and red headers right, up here in this corner left as I'm looking at it of this oscillator. We've got a thick brown cable here terminating in a three pin black connector that goes into a black header. That's just off from this large capacitor that's in this corner of this oscillator. Again, that one's kind of hard to spot because the header blends in with all these black components surrounding it. This four cable ribbon cable, it's brown, red, orange and yellow, ends in a red connector. And that red connector is right beside this white connector, very close to this oscillator. And then there's another red connector with a ribbon cable, but this one has no yellow cable. It's just brown, red and orange. A three pin red header. You notice that most of these connectors coming from this corner of the mixer um, join in around this area. And last of all we've got more of a rainbow coloured ribbon cable. In addition to the brown, red, orange and yellow there's a pale blue fifth cable there. It's going to a white header. 
Matt Whiteheader is between this pair of variable inductors on their own and these relays over here. The reason I'm taking pains to tell you what cable goes where is that it is possible to get these confused like there's a four pin connector here that I could if I was feeling really confused stick over here beside this jack socket but that's not where it goes there's a another red four pin header over here by the oscillator and that's correct so if you don't make some sort of distinction in your mind between this group of cables coming out of one side of the mixer and this other group of cables coming out of the other side of the mixer then it's possible to become very confused in reassembly we'll come back to this upper half of the case later on let's go ahead and remove this record playback board from the plastic case this is something you might need to do, imagining that there were some components that you wanted to replace. You would need access to the underside of the printed circuit board in order to do soldering and all that kind of stuff. So there's five screws. One, two, three, four, five. That's four roughly in the four corners and one near the centre. I'll come back once I've unscrewed those. All five of the screws that I removed are about a centimetre long. Brass -ish in colour with a wide ferrule because they're going into plastic mounting posts. Before you remove this printed circuit board from the case, you'll also need to disconnect this little two pin white connector from a header in the top left corner as I'm looking at it. And that connects the battery compartment to the board. At that point, this will just lift away. You can see that these plastic surroundings for the various sockets slot into recesses on the lower plastic case. 